Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm putting together a quick video to talk about how we could and how we should show as opposed to tell when we're in a multimodal environment. So when I talk about a multimodal environment, what I'm talking about is when we're in an online space, all of these pages, these texts are made of images, video, audio, links, maps, graphs, um, charts, infographics, but it's a lot of different content, a lot of different uh, elements and information that are presented to us, um, and it can be a challenge for some people to negotiate that. So, it, you know, if we're thinking about multimodal environments, we're looking through, uh, you know, search engine results page, and we can see there's hyperlinks in here, and this is pretty, you know, simple. It's just a lot of text on a page. Um, we can look through images that are out there, but for the most part, as a reader online, as a successful reader online, we have to be able to negotiate and search and sift through these multiple spaces. The challenge is, if you're guiding someone else, if you're a teacher and you're guiding students, or if you're guiding a peer on how to get through these environments, it can often be a challenge directing someone how to negotiate this interface. What I mean by that is, um, you know, I frequently get emails or phone calls from family members asking how to use a specific tool or how do I change my iCloud storage settings or how do I log into um, Facebook, how do I log into my Gmail. I also get this from students that will say, um, you know, we're using Google Hangouts, how do I send you a Hangout message? Um, and what I found myself in the habit of is writing long textual directions on how to get through the interface. And so in one of my classes right now, I'm using WikiEdu and my students are editing Wikipedia. And so as I move my way through this environment, it can be a challenge because, you know, I'm writing textual directions, typing out, you know, in words, okay, go to the top right, click on log in with Wikipedia type in your username, type in your password. Oh, but if you don't have a username and password, you need to go create one or join Wikipedia. So it, it, it's paragraphs of information that I'm writing to tell people how to get around this multi, multimodal environment. Um, and at some point I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. So years ago, I started thinking about what are other ways I can help show as opposed to tell. Uh, how to get around this environment. And one of the things that I started using is screen captures. When I started talking about screen captures back in the day, and by back in the day I mean 10 to 15 years ago, when I started talking about screen captures to teachers and, and my students, it was one of those things that screen captures would be nice if you did this. Um, now I think we're at the point where as an educator, as a, as a citizen of the internet, um, I think this is something you have to know how to do and you have to be able to do so effectively. Um, so a screen capture is basically a static image of your screen. I'm going to have videos talking about what this really looks like, um, but if you think about a screen capture, one of the things that you can do is you can have an image and you can basically um, annotate that image. So you can add text and you can add arrows and, and basically highlight certain things. And I'll show you different ways that I use screen captures. But I think it's important that you figure out, okay, how can I take a picture of something that's on my screen, add some annotation to it, text to it, mark it up, and share that image to show as opposed to tell what's happening on my screen. And so what I do is I, I have I do this a lot in my blog post now where I'll basically take a picture of something on my screen and I'll do a tutorial to show you how to get around the environment um, and log in, use the tools. Um, so I was using screen captures for a while and, and primarily um, marking up and annotating and showing what it would look like. So if I look at this post here on my site, I can go down and I can find an example where I basically grab a screenshot, add an arrow, type in some text, enter your search term here, and add that in. And so typically what I'll do is in a blog post, I'll have something like this that says head to Flickr, enter the keywords. And so to help show what I'm talking about, I add in the image and I mark it up and annotate it because I know that some people are visual learners and it helps to just see that um, as they're searching through. 
a challenge with this is that a lot of our, our interfaces, a lot of the online environments, these websites, they change the layout. So it's a lot of fun as you make screen captures and you build a nice blog post or a website that shows how to negotiate these spaces. And then the very next day, things change. Um, but that's the nature of the beast when you work online. So with this, um, you know, this is an example of screen captures trying to figure out um, how I can help show as opposed to tell. After working with screen captures for, you know, a, a long time, um, I started to wonder, what is the next step? Like, there's got to be a better way to do this. Um, and, and, and I figured out, one of the things I saw is that I was a, a big video gamer. And I would see people online and they would do, like, walkthroughs of what's happening in a video game. So if you couldn't beat a level, you would go buy a magazine, it would give you a walkthrough and tell you how to beat a level. Soon enough that became advanced and you could go to YouTube and you could search for a certain level of a video game and see someone else beat that level. And so I was watching the videos one day, like a video walkthrough, and I was thinking about, well, why can't we do that in education? Like why can't we have like like video walkthroughs in teaching and learning? So Ultimately, I started f fumbling into um, the the idea of screencasting, um, screencasting for instructional educational purposes. And I've used a lot of tools throughout the years, and I'll have videos on those. But the the idea here is that a screen capture is a static image taken from your screen. I prefer to add annotations like text and arrows and boxes and everything else for the screen capture, um, whereas a screen cast is a video taken of the screen. So the screen cast is pretty much what I'm doing right now. So I've opened up my computer, I have a frame set up, I've got my browser behind the frame, and I'm recording what I see on my screen and showing you how to negotiate these spaces. In the future, I will have you know videos about screen captures and screen casting. Um, and basically, I'm just pulling up my screen and giving you a tour and talking you through some of these ideas. Um, and so screencasting is just making a video and negotiating it, um, negotiating these spaces to help the learner understand what's happening. There's a lot of great tools out there um, that you could possibly use. I will showcase what I currently use and some of the tools that work for me and, and don't work for me anymore. Um, but this video is pretty much focusing on showing as opposed to telling as we're in these online spaces. So the screen capture is that static image, um, you know, annotated if you can. I do. I think it's it's important to help guide the, the learner, you know, guide the reader. And then a screencast is the video of what's happening on your screen. Uh, and, it, and it may or may not include narration. For me, narration works. Um, and so in my classes, and as I work with individuals, I think it's important um, I think it's a vital skill to be able to create these screen captures and screen casts. And the idea is to create materials that you can help show and tell or show as opposed to tell in your materials. So if I look at a blog post, I will typically put together a blog post talking about Creative Commons in this piece here. And in the middle of it, what I'll do is I'll add in, you know, an image that I mark up and annotate. And the image will pair up with the text so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, what I also will add is in something like this, I realized that the text that I give, you know, my textual directions and instructions teaching you how to look through these environments and, and make sense of this information can be a challenge. So what I add is a screen capture where I mark up and annotate and show you what each of these elements is and what it means and why it's important. Um, and for people that follow my blog, for my students, this is helpful. They want to be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, and so what I do is I put together posts that have the text they have the, the screen captures, the images that are annotated and marked up like this. And then typically what I'll also do is I will record a screen cast, uh, a video like this, and put it on my YouTube channel and then embed that video right in the blog post as well. So I'm giving you the same information um, multiple ways. I'm, I'm basically tuning into the, the multimodal nature of the internet. Okay, And once again, that's those images, the text, the video, the audio, the hyperlinks, all of the other great stuff that makes the internet what it is, I'm trying to create teaching materials that sort of follow that mentality. 
So we're talking about screen captures, we're talking about screencast. Screen captures are those images. Screencasting is the video, pretty much what you're watching here. Um, and then I think the idea is to start writing in a way where you think about, okay, how can I fold these different multimodal elements into a piece that really presents my information and makes it more approachable and accessible for all readers? Um, and, and so this is what I do in, in my blog posts, in materials I present in class. I'll put all this together. And yes, I'll still show up for class and give a lecture and talk through this. But before I start the lecture and before I talk about, you know, Creative Commons licensing for this piece, I'll take 20 minutes of class, talk about Creative Commons licensing. But before I start the class, before I start this part of the lecture and after the lecture, I remind students that the materials for this lecture are already online. And I'll send you the link for it and you can go review it at a later date. So once again, we're talking about screen captures. We're talking about screencasts. Screen captures are those static images. Screencasts are the video clips and the video content where you talk through materials. Hopefully you annotate the screen captures. Hopefully you narrate the screencast. Um, but for me, there's one more thing. There's one more thing that I've been trying to figure out. So a screen capture is that nice static image, the screencast is the video, but let's face facts. Um, sometimes people won't watch the full video. You know, I mean, this video now, we're moving on to the 11 and a half, 12 minute mark. I might not have many of you. Um, so there's a lot of people that won't watch the full video. At the same time, the, the image sometimes doesn't capture and share everything that you want it to. So the video is too much, the image is too little. And there's a lot of times that you want just a little bit more than the image. You want a little bit more than the typical screen capture, okay? Um, and, and so what I equate that to is you, you want like a, a one-two step. You want like, okay, go to Google, type in screen capture, click on images, and just that. That's all you want. That's the direction that you want um, people to see in your materials. For those purposes, one of the things that I've been playing with lately is animated GIFs or GIFs depending on what side of the, the, you know, the street you grew up on. Um, so for me, I'm playing with animated instructional GIFs, animated instructional GIFs to figure out how can I use these for instructional purposes, okay? And, and, and what it looks like is if I'm looking at this post once again, and I'll have a video on the tools that I use, if I'm looking at this post here, I'll have text and I'll have hyperlinks, you know, leading out to materials. I already showed you this uh, screen capture that's annotated, but then in using Flickr and using these tools, sometimes there's a need to show a little bit more. Once again, that one, two step. And so this is an example of an animated GIF that is used for instructional purposes. So what I'm doing is, is I'm folding it into my text and all I'm doing is showing you in Flickr how to find, or this is Google Images, sorry, how to find the, the search tools and the licenses for this purpose. So this is what I'm still trying to figure out is that, that middle ground between the, the capture, the image, and the video. Um, and there's more examples down here so this is an example of me scrolling through to find the, the, the Apple or the image that best meets my needs and then clicking on the Creative Commons license to see uh, how it limits my search choices. I also have other versions down here. Um, many of my students would have challenges finding, uh, figuring out how to add Alan Levine's uh, bookmarklet, you know, her, his attribution helper. So I literally did a screen cap, an animated GIF of me grabbing that attribution helper and dragging it up to my bookmark bar. Um, and so once again, it's, it's a little one, two step in this, it's a little bit longer, but I'm trying to find that middle ground between the screen capture, the image and the screen cast, the full video. Okay. So once again, this video is all about thinking about this multimodal environment in which we exist and trying to figure out ways that we can help show and tell or show up as opposed to tell and give directions in this multimodal environment. And what we're looking at is um, 
on one level, what are ways that we can take pictures of things happening on our screen, take pictures of stuff on our screen, possibly annotate it and mark it up to direct the reader. At the other end of the, of the spectrum, there's also the screencast. Do a video just like we're doing here where I'm, I'm basically walking you through something and letting you view my screen almost like you're looking over my shoulder and I talk you through things. In between those, those are two things that I think you need to know. You need to know without a shadow of a doubt screen captures. You need to know screen casting without a shadow of a doubt. I think there's also a chance for us to think about that middle ground and stake out that middle ground. And, and for me, part of that middle ground right now is the instructional animated GIFs or GIFs. I think that's the middle ground right now, but I'm still trying to figure it out and, and I'll keep playing and try to make sense of it. Um, Hopefully this helps work for you. Um, by all means, if this is something that you enjoy, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up or a comment on the video. More than happy to listen to you um, and figure out what other needs and other questions you have. Um, this video is put together because there's people that have sent me questions to figure out how do we help you know, show and tell in our posts, how do we make our posts more accessible and approachable. Uh, by all means, check out my blog at WIBurn.com um, and head on over to my newsletter and subscribe if that helps you out as well. So hopefully this is all of value to you um, and I look forward to seeing your comments and your feedback. Have a great day.